this little green haired potato munching elf looking little piece of poop. You think you come in on my Doki Doki? The Doki Doki that I've been playing for weeks. We need to do an ultra episode. Good morning friends and foes and thank you for tuning in to today's Freshest Vitamins. Now it is day two of Ultimate Christmas something something palooza and we are gonna be playing an ultra mega super episode of Doki Doki Literature Club because these pagans right they're out here with their green hair trying to come in on my turf when we clearly know that this is vitamins exclusive exclusivo you know and you know i i know that my hair not but might be green my skin might not be as bad as the crank gameplays but we can get there so without further ado we're gonna jump right in all right guys we are back with doki doki and we're gonna do a super ultra mega episode because i have bought extra batteries for my camera so you know we're up and running i am the ace of spades i am the aces mate so let's go back in and um, I was considering stopping this game, but I've been told that it actually gets pretty horrible. Apparently it gets real real. So we're gonna jump right in. Okay, we were at, we were, we had just shown our poem to Sayori, which is the one I think I wanna go with, cause I also, you know, I, I connect with the message of just doing things at the last minute and then wanting breakfast. So, okay. But we had a nice talk to Natsuki as well. So let's see. Um, um, okay, okay, well, let's start with the things I don't like. First of all, um, Masuki rereads my poem. Never mind, I don't feel like giving you my opinion. Uh, uh, then what's the point of sharing in the first place? I, I wrote this when I could have been doing other things. Like, I, I, I did work, like, I did my homework. Like, are you not proud of me? Uh, in fact, I remember how I said I wanted to read your poems. That's what I had in mind when writing this. I want to help you feel comfortable enough to share yours. Like Monica said. Eh. Well, it would, have, it would be more comfortable sharing my poem if yours was really bad. He was supposed to be showing me some dumb poem and make me go, ha, well, it's not that great, but let me show what real literature looks like. And you went and ruined it. Sorry that I'm super talented. Like, it's, it's not my fault that I'm just naturally good at things, you know? I hope you're happy. Eh. So in other words, you're saying you liked it. Eric. Natsuki retorts, gets caught in her throat. Ooh. Ah, you're so, you just, ah, you don't understand anything, do you? I think she fancies us. I already told you that you don't have to go announcing it to the world, like you're all self-important. Pretty sure you never said that. I said that. I say that mostly to myself. Natsuki must really hate me or something. I can't figure out if it's a win or a loss that she liked my poem. In any case, you still need to show me yours, right? Fine, I guess. Only because Monica will make me if I don't. This voice is gonna kill me. Oh wow. Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek. Cheetahs can run, eagles can fly, people can try, but that's about it. Great. I've read it. Yeah, told you you weren't gonna like it. I like it. Alright, just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But the but isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Exactly. Uh, roses are red, violets are blue. I'm bad at rhyming. Potato. Good. Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like it when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening so I decided to write about it yeah I understand yeah like it's a lot about, it's a lot like that in like the YouTube world like you see so many people do amazing things and you're there like try not to laugh channel number 16 coming soon yo oh sorry about that 
Um, but the other thing nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I said for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helped me bring out that feeling in the last line. You sure did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a bro. <laughs> I'm glad you learned something. Oh wow, didn't think that from the youngest one here, did you? How young is she? If she's too young, I mean, that's a little bit creepy. <laughs> guess not. I decided to humor her with the last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Okay, who's next? Uh, let's go with Monica. Oh wow, you have really green eyes. They are like a butterfly's arse in the morning. Hi Kawaii-chan. Have a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to ring things up, okay? I don't know what this voice is. All right, I'll keep that in mind. I know what, do you know what? I have an idea. Have you ever heard about a wet t-shirt contest? No, 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 the one where you can see uh, female uh, breast organs. No, the one where I'm the only one with a wet t-shirt, but it's because I've been sweating too much and I'm really awkwardly trying to hide it. So I'm just like shifting around in my seat, trying to hide the puddle that's forming under my ass crack. Anyway, let's carry on. Uh, I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing. It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. Ah! Don't worry, Kawaii-chan. I, you know what? This like whole pose you're doing here, that's like, an, no back can go in this. You have like amazing abs. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's sort of a barrier that we'll learn to get past soon. That's true. I hand Monica my poem. Um, I like it, Kawaii-chan. Really? It's a lot cuter than I expected. She looks a little bit worried, doesn't she? Like, if you look at this eyebrow here, like, it's very important that we analyze the body language. Like, you see the eyebrow here, slight shaded impression and a little smile. Hmm. She's definitely distressed. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Oh, jeez. No, no. It kind of makes me think of something Natsuki would write. And she's a good writer too. So take that as a compliment. Ah, ha, ha, ha. If you say so. Yep. By any chance, have you heard anything about Chell Silverstein? Yes. Eh? Maybe a long time ago. Ah, yes. Chell Silverstein. Oh, was that the name? Yeah, he wrote Dragons on Fire? He's famous for telling all kinds of stories in just a simple words. His poems can be funny, endearing, or even sad. And sometimes they're only a few lines long. They might even feel like they're written for kids, but if you think about them, they can express views of the world that would apply to anybody. Oh, do you mean Dr. Seuss? I see. So you're saying that Natsuki is kind of like that? Sort of. Maybe she's not an ex expert, but you probably won't find much filler in her poems. They might be easy to write, but they're super challenging to get the meaning through. Okay, so I can see why it would be your kind of poem to explore. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of stale, the stale that sets here. Everyone might be a little bit biased. This is horrible. Towards their own kind of styles. But I always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. I think we just did a mating call. I'm not gonna lie. Anyways, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry. I'm very, I'm, oh. I thought she was gonna be really, like, braggy there. Like, don't worry, I'm very good. Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims not to be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? Hey, getting some morals there. I see. Well, let's read it then. Let's see. Oh, wow. It was a poem, not an essay, damn. See, okay, hole in the wall. Hole in wall. It couldn't have been me. See the direction this back wall protrudes. A noisy neighbor, an angry boyfriend. I'll never know, I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I feel real. 
blind like a film left out in the sun, but it's too late. My retinas, already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright, it was too deep. Stretching forever into everything, a hole of infinite choices. I realized now that I wasn't looking in, I was looking out, and he on the other side was looking in to the butthole. Beautiful. Absolutely, oh, Pulitzer surprise right there. That's great. I love a good butthole poem. So what do you think? Oh, it's very free form, if that's what you call it. So I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. It's okay. Yes, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. Okay, when performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Well, I'm not sure if I know how to put this. I guess you could s to say I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? An, an epiphany? What's an epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Sorry. Notification. Anyway, I think she fancies us too, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Uh, and here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try too hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on paper and tidy it up later. That's, you stole that from, who is it, Ernest Hemingway? Hemingway? I think someone said, uh, throw up on your typewriter in the morning clean up in the afternoon. You're stealing that. I'm calling bull shit. Just another way to think about this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. Well, I guess, but then again, if you move around while peeing, you're gonna get pee everywhere instead of in a puddle of pee. There's been a lot of poo and like poop and pee humor on this uh, video so far, and it's probably gonna get worse. So, so just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Awesome, one more to go. Yuri. Ah, oh, it's you. I remember you. Mmm. Ha. Yuri starts, says the poem. I'm gonna pass more than enough time for her to finish reading. Um, oh, sorry. I forgot to start speaking. Oh, I'm so random. I forgot to start speaking. I get lost in my head too much. Welcome to my twisted mind. Mm. It's fine, don't worry. For don't force yourself. I'm not. Ju I just need to put my thoughts into words. Hold on. Okay. Starts rapping. Rolling in, hella deep, heading to the mezzanine, dressed in all pink, set my gator shoes, so the green. Go on, Yuri. This is your first time writing a poem, right? Uh, yeah. Why do you ask? I'm just making sure. I guess that it might be after reading through it. Oh. Ah, oh, so it's bad. <laughs> no! Did I just raise my voice? Um, I'm so sorry. Oh no! Senpai. I disappointed Senpai. Yuri burst her face in her hands. Where? I don't- no correlation. Face up here. Hands down here. Not buried. Not six feet under. I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we haven't really gotten anywhere. I might take- it might take Yuri a while to get used to new people. It's fine. I really didn't notice. What were you saying? Uh, um, it's just that there's a specific writing habit that are usually typical of new writers, and having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most notable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Oh no! That means something, I guess. Any writers out there, hear me if that's correct. Once Yuri finds a train of thought, it is as if her demeanor totally changes. I used to do haikus on my Twitter. They were really good, actually. Huh. Go find them. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that is not something you can be blamed for. There's so many difficult, different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice, learning by example, and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little bit biased, though. 
Spies? How? Um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. Yeah, I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Like, just say it. God damn it. I, okay, so I think Monica fancies us. I think Natsuki fancies us. And I think Yuri fancies us. So, so far, uh, we're, we're drowning in the puss puss over here. So, you know, I better bring my swimming goggles. <laughs> Such a bad joke. <laughs> do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Okay. Yuri smiles dreamily as if it's a, that's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Okay. Oh wow, can I even read this? I, oh, I'm so bad at like calligraphy writing. Like, oh wow, okay. Ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining streetlight to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe. Calm, calm, breathing air of the present but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. <laughs> so this is the light, yeah? I'm flicking back. That was dumb. Alright. Uh, I, I'm sorry I have such terrible handwriting. You literally have the best handwriting out of all of us. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you so long to read it. Ah, well, I just don't read script very often. Me too. <laughs> I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Eh? That's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. Was that short? Holy crap, what kind of poems are these people writing? It wasn't too short. Now, I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm, 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 I'm really glad you like it. To be, I'll be honest, since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little bit more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? <laughs> I think that's a yes. Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Kawaii-chan. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. I think that's, I think that's a... <laughs> You didn't write, you didn't read it properly. You don't understand the depth, the deepness, like how philosophical I am. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost, lingering in, the last, in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more song putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. It's nothing really. Well, it makes me happy that you think that. Just remember that it won't be long before you pick up on these things too. Yeah, maybe you're right. I guess I'll have to keep trying. I'm counting on you. Thank you. Are we gonna write another poem? Phew, I guess that's everyone. I glanced around the room. That was a lot more stressful than I anticipated. If this is, it's, as it's as wow i'm struggling here it's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities nah like two of them at least loved it like natsuki loved it sayori oh natsuki and sayori loved it even if they're just being nice there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs this is a literature club after all is it was that in the title doki doki i thought it was doki doki martial arts club oh wow i'm in the wrong place this is is that jane smith no that's William Shakespeare. Easy mistake. This is a literature club after all. I sigh. Me on a daily basis. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They, they gingerly... Gingerly? Is that, is, that a, is that a diss because my hair is orange now? Do not care for that. Exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I wish each of their expressions changed. Nas Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Did you say something? No, oh, it's nothing. Oh, oh, oh. beef! 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 I smell like... I smell like beef. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Uh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I know that. I just meant 
the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Uh, you mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple of suggestions. Eh. <clears throat> if I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Oh, this is turning into, like, Mean Girls all of a sudden. Sayori liked it, and Kawaii-chan did too. Okay, I liked all the poems. I'm, I'm, I'm a, like, I'm just giving out likes everywhere I go. I'm like, I like your poem. I like your poem. Homeless person shouting on the street, street curb. <laughs> I like, yeah, the world is ending. I agree. Actually, that's a good point. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, <clears throat> excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I didn't, don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless, of course, I come across something particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. Oh, wow, they're dissing each other. I'm just waiting for, like, uh, what's her face? What's her face? The uh, fancy lady, Iggy Asalia, to come in, and she's like, oh, bitch. Oh, first thing first, I'm the realist. And then we go on from there. And um, quite unlike my poem, too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Let's check. The music stopped. Did you hear that? Nasuki suddenly stands up. Oh, I didn't realize she was so invested in trying to impress a new member, Yuri. Eh? Oh, it started again. I don't know. That's not what I, I, uh, you just, Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Kawaii-chan appreciates my advice more than he appreciates yours. Uh, how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you staff full of yourself? I, no, uh, if I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Uh, uh, um, guys, why? Oh, wow, they're fighting over me. Um, right, um, is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Kawaii started showing up. Natsuki! Oh, lord! Um, Natsuki, that's a little. Um, that this does not evolve you! Holy crap! I don't like fighting, guys. Uh, suddenly, both girls turned towards me. I said they just noticed I was standing there. Fuck. Shit. Invis invisibility cloak. Activate now, please. Wonder Woman's jet. Do I have it? No. Fuck. Kawaii-chan. She just... She's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this would ha wouldn't have happened in the first place. What? What's the point in making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out at the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Kawaii-chan. Wait, there's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Kawaii-chan? Um, well, uh... How did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing, but who remember, whomever I agree with, I probably think more highly of me. Okay, here's the thing. Um, I do think I agree with both of them. I feel like sometimes the simplicity in a in a word or a saying or a the meaning should be very apparent and obvious and I think that serves one purpose and I think another purpose would be oh it's hidden so people have to analyze it and I think they serve two different purposes I don't think they should be black or white they should be like you can use both to what they're worth so I'm not gonna go with any of them because they're crazy so I'm gonna go like help me Sayori Natsuki just me drying up any words I had in my mouth so instead I turned to Yuri Yuri but Yuri's expression is so defenseless that I can't bring myself to say anything to her. Uh, Sayori! Eh? Yeah. Um, e e everyone's fighting is making Sayori uncomfortable. How can the two of you keep fighting when you know you're making your friend feel like this? Kawaii-chan. Well, that's, that's her problem. This isn't... No, wait, this is angry. Well, that's her problem. It's not... This isn't about her. I, I agree. Hey, you agree on something! Say this is fine now. It's unfair for others to interject their own feelings into our conflict. Yeah, unless Sayori wants to tell Yuri that what a stuck-up jerk she's being? She would never. If you immaturity that's made her upset in the first place. Excuse me? Are you listening to yourself? I'm getting into this. This is exactly why, exactly why nobody likes- Stop! Natsuki, Yuri. 
You guys are my friends. I just want everyone to get along and be happy. My friends are wonderful people and I love them because of their differences. Natsuki's poems, they're amazing because they give you so many feelings with just a few words. I agree. And Yuri's poems are amazing because they paint beautiful pictures in your head. Oh, wonderful. Everyone's so talented. So why are we fighting? Because, well... Also, Natsuki's cute and there's nothing wrong with that. And Yuri's boobs are the same as they always were. Big and beautiful. <laughs> um, um, Sayori... Sayori stands triumphantly. Monica stands behind her with a bewildered expression. I'll make some tea. Yuri rushes off. Natsuki sits down with a blank expression on her face, staring at nothing. So this is why Sayori is vice, vice president. I whisper to Monica. She nods in return. To be honest, I might come off as a good leader and I can organize things, but I'm not very good with people. I couldn't even bring myself to interject. As president, that's kind of embarrassing of me. Aha! <laughs> nah. It's not like I can blame you. It wasn't. I wasn't able to say anything either. Well, I guess that just means Sayori is amazing in her own ways, isn't it? You could say that. She might be an airhead, but sometimes it's really suspicious that she knows exactly what she's doing. I see. Take good care of her, okay? I would hate to see her get herself hurt. That makes two of us. You can count on me. Monica smiles sweetly at me, causing my stomach to know. She's a genuine person, really does make a good parent. President, regardless of what she says. If only I could get the chance to talk to her a little more. Okay everyone, it's just about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was alright, well, mostly. Kawaii-chan, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome! In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you learned something from your friends too. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself, I did learn a little bit about the kind of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. That's a little bit manipulative, but all right. I nod to myself with newfound determination. Kawaii-chan, ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. <laughs> Sayori beams at me. It truly has been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. I think I'm gonna go with Sayori. Sayori, about what happened earlier. Uh, what do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Mitsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. Uh, that's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't, you don't hate them, do you? Uh, no, no, I don't hate them. Uh, I just wanted your opinion, that's all. Um, I can see why they make good friends with you. Uh, phew. Ooh. Uh, you know, Kawaii-chan, it's nice I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone as well makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you too. I think so too. And it's causing problems. That's... <laughs> every day is going to be so much fun. They have to do this every day? Holy crap. Sigh. It looks like Sayuri still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but does it really need to stop there? Well, we'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. <laughs> Alright. Uh, okay. Yeah. Let's do this. Okay, are we writing a poem now? Oh, I'm ready. Oh, did you get that on ca- Did that appear? Okay, I'm ready. I'm gonna go with. Amazing. Adventure! Fireflies. Extreme! Vitality. Melody. Starscape. Rainbow. So, do these words then... These words, uh... Shape who, like, wants to talk to me in the club, right? I think that's how it is. And it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple of days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Kawaii-chan! Yo! Sayori, looks like you're in a good mood today. This is, the, we're gonna try to get with Sayori, okay? That's where we're gonna go. I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing you got in, uh, to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always simple things with you anyway. I like that. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? Yeah. Bro. No thanks. Eh? That's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh? Why that all of a sudden? 
no reason really. Just wanted to look at it. Now she retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. She turns it upside down and lets the contents spill out onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you wouldn't have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry or and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to, to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I will lend you some. But that's there's one more thing. Oh, Detective Kawaii-chan up on here, like, oh, Sherlock Holmes thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves the one option. Wah! I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. All right, that's okay. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face in her, is in her book, as always. Uh, I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Very funny. Haha, <laughs> jokes. on in, Joke book. <laughs> Yuri, tell Kawaii-chan to let me borrow some money. That's, um, don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Uh, uh, did I just... I didn't mean that. Oh, I get too absorbed into my book. Um, uh. <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's fun. It's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You are right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Revolution? Retribution. Okay. See, sometimes... Wait, I'm gonna... That's what... That was annoying me. That... Still, coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside of us, isn't there? <laughs> don't let her... Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But... You wouldn't have come if there wasn't any cupcakes. That is true. I only, I'm only summoned by cupcakes and other s sweet things like, I like um, cookies. Cookies are my personal favorite. Or Snickers. You wouldn't have come if it wasn't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> Pwap. What? Kya? Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow, what was, eh? A cookie? A cookie! Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Mine! Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution. <laughs> Actually, that one almost worked. Ha <laughs> I was, I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction though. <laughs> Natsuki! That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. I got... Oh, I want cookie. <laughs> Sayori hugs the cookie. Me too, Sayori. Me too. <laughs> Jeez, just eat it. Rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. Oh, so good. So good. Mmm. Sayori suddenly claps her hand over her mouth. I bit my tongue. Fuck. <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. It's an emotional experience, okay? Like, a lot happens when you eat a cookie. Just gonna check that. I'm actually recording. I am recording. Good. And Suki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really good too. Sayori, can I try it? Jeez, do you want all the cookies, mate? Becky's can't be choosers, but yours is chocolate. Well, yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Did she give you oatmeal and raisin? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you share this one with me. <laughs> Sayori gets out of her seat and goes by Suki, then wraps her arm around her. Oh, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie's still in hand, and Suki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Um. <laughs> Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Hey! Did you see where you just do that? <laughs> Mouthful Sayori torts away to safety. <laughs> that's good, yeah. I, oh yeah, that's good. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Uh, Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Um, where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have you any of you heard anything about her being late today? Uh, not me. Yeah, I, I haven't either. Um, that's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. 
She's probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Oh yeah, she was like, she was like very popular, I think. I think I remember from the first episode. Um, you don't think she, she has a, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She probably, she's probably more desirable than all of us combined. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose to club over a boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Boyfriend? <laughs> Bitch, I'm a lesbian. What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah, well, my last period today was study hall. Uh, to be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. Ah, that makes no sense though. Like, you would have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I don't really, I kind of just started recently. I always wanted to learn piano. <laughs> look, they all look, why are they all got red cheeks? They look a little bit like, she's looking at me though, so is she, and so is she. She's looking, I'm assuming, at a cookie. I wasn't, I was always wanting to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's, um, Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Oh, she wants to impress. She wants to impress. Yay. That sounds cool. I'll also look forward to it. We will. I actually, well, I really enjoy when people like play music to me. It's just nice. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Kawaii-chan. Oh, that pose. Oh my God. Monica sw smiles sweetly. Ah. I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Uh, don't worry, I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck! Thanks! So, I didn't miss anything, did I? Uh, not really. I chose to leave- I chose to- choose to leave Aosuyori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. So Yuri somehow already finished her entire cookie. Me too. Uh, Yuri is back to her book and Atsuki disappears into the closet. Man, it looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slump down into the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I could always read some of the book Yuri gave me, but I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening in on Sayori's conversation with Monica. We're probably going to seem really lame compared to all the other clubs though. Um, well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem is that the idea of literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that at all, you know. We just need to find a way to show everyone something that speaks to their creative minds. Hmm. That doesn't solve the problem though. Uh, what do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will come in the first place if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? Wow, we're talking strategy here, but isn't like, isn't Monica like the most popular girl in school? Like, surely that will attract a lot of people. And after they come, we can do the thing to speak to their creative minds. What's this? So you're always taking this really seriously. I guess it's the president and the vice, vice president like talking about the club's future. That makes sense. It's rare to hear her, hear her deliberately like this. That's a good point. In that case, do you think food will do the trick? What kind? Well, I guess we could... Cupcakes! Aha, <laughs> I'm good thinking. I would come. Also, another one. Alcohol. Very, very effective at getting people to come to a place, especially if it's free. Uh, good thinking. Natsuki would love that. To, would love to do that. Ah, oh, you're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. That wasn't why I suggested it. Cupcake speaks to my creative tummy. Cupcake it is then. I'm hungry. Anyway, we still need to work out the details of it, the event itself. Okay, I find myself smiling. In the end, Sayori is still her usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all, Sayori can put her mind to things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it will be like to see that the world through her eyes. What? I open my eyes to find Sayori's 
face filling my vision just here. I nearly fall out of my chair. <laughs> sorry! Wait, actually I'm not sorry at all! It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't the napping club. Oh, there's a napping club? Why aren't we there? Oh, I would love the napping club. Can we go to the napping club instead? Does our school have a napping club? Yeah, same. You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you're gonna have less time for anime, you know? Uh, you'll need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. I glanced over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true, though. Yeah, I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. Eh, see, they're already, like, almost a couple, so it wouldn't change too much, I think. It's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Um, do you know how we can make sure she doesn't oversleep? By staying over. Just like, if we wake up together, you know, I mean... Just a, just a thought. Not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's... It's a secret. Do you have to guess the password? The password was password? Shit, how did you figure it out? Uh, I knew it. Come on! At least give me the benefit of the doubt! I can't even do that. Look, Sayori, it's written all over you. Eh? Sayori glances around herself. How is it written all over me? You were clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is still sticking out all around here. Ah! I run my fingertips down the side of uh, Sayori's head, trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need to brush this. My hair is just really hard to get right. I won't fall. I, I won't fall for that. There's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't sitting straight either. There's a toothpaste stain on your collar right here, is there? I can't see one. Uh, I try to wipe off the stain with my finger, but nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's going to tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. Hey! Hey, you meanie. And you don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori, why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Oh, wow, that's harsh. Damn, I, I'm sorry. I, that wasn't me. That was him. That was... I had no choice in that, what I said there. That, that was mean. I... Uh, yeah, that is super mean. I agree. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I start to button a blazer up from the bottom. Once you see him, um, why are we buttoning it up? I mean, we should have be taken it off, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. Oh. Oh. <laughs> this is so funny. What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kind of things. Uh, don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? Uh, I guess. Hey, be careful. That button might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near her chest. Does this thing even fit you properly? <laughs> it did when I bought it. Sigh. If you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit anymore. What are you smiling about? It means my boobs are getting bigger again, boy! <laughs> my vajongas are gonna get huge! My jugs! My melons! My grapefruit grandes! Oh, these maracas ain't gonna stop for nothing! Anyway, so there's that. There's that. Uh, it means my boobs are getting bigger again. Don't say that out loud! <laughs> anyway, you look much better now, so... Uh, why does it feel strange to see Sayori's blazer button up like that? But it's so stuffy! Ah, oh, it's not worth it at all! So you hastily unbuttoned her blazer once more. Was it so they didn't have to try another, like, figure with her blazer buttoned up? Phew! That's so much better! So you puts her arm around, arm start and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying like that like it's a good thing? Because if I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. Oh, that's cute. So she values our friendship more than she values, like, having a boyfriend. That's kind of cute. That's kind of cute. And you take care of me better than anyone else would anyway. See, we're already a relationship. This is happening. I ship it. Kawaiyori. 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 Hashtag Kawaiyori. So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. Eh, I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well, anyway, just focus on trying to make up, wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on getting to bed earlier. You know what, there's a lot of bed talk right here, and I feel like we have a solution that could solve both those things. You can get me to bed early by being there, and I can get you out of bed early by me being there. So it's like... It's, 
it's the deal. <laughs> I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are of taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so, huh? So maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. Ah, oh, but I was joking that time. Man, it's impossible to tell you with, you with you sometimes. I think she was half joking. I think she was like, okay, I'm gonna say this, and if he takes it seriously, I'm serious, but if he says it's a joke, I'm gonna say it's a joke. You get what I mean? Yeah. Okay, everyone. Eh? Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems you wrote now? Yay! Kawaii-chan, I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. I feel... Mm. I fail to sound... I fail to sound enthusiastic, but Sayori still trots away to retrieve her poem. Actually, I, oh, I actually hope she likes it. <laughs> um, actually, we're going to do Sayori last. Monica. Hi again, Kawaii-chan. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. Uh, you never know. Uh, want to share what you wrote for today? Sure. Here you go. Alright. I like this one. It makes me think of something Sayori would like. Boy! Oh, we're getting it. We're getting in there. Is that so? You and Sayori are really good friends, right? Wouldn't be surprised if you had those sorts of things in common. Ah, uh, well. We may be good friends, but Sayori and I are really... Are actually really different. See, I believe that if you ever get in a relationship with someone, it's important that you're best friends first. Because best friends in a relationship will work better because they already know how to talk, talk about things. They know they have things in common. And they sort of... It's not just going to be a flame that burns bright and then dies, if you get what I mean. Um, well, that might be the case, but maybe there are also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you, it sounds like the two of you really care about each other's well-being. Even if you show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you'd think. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get when reading your poem. Hmm. You sure you're not reading into it too much? Haha, <laughs> it could be. Meh. 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 Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in that, any case, Yuri's writing has kind of a gentle feel to it. I can tell that she likes exploring with emotions like happiness and sadness. She wrote about breakfast. Go on. Who knew, who knew that someone so happy would enjoy sad things too, right? Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, to each their own. And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little either. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Holy crap, it's a long one again. Okay. Save me. It's called. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue, an endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. I like how, I liked how like unformed it was. I really like that. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. I like that. I, I really liked it. No, I never said that. It's just the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. I agree with that. Uh, it's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short make it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what, it, what it's about, though. Ahaha. Ah, sometimes asking some blah blah, I skip that. Uh, a poem can be an abstract as a physical expression of a feeling. Or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game! You never know when, when you might change your mind. Or even when something unexpected might happen. Wait, is this a tip about even about writing? What am I talking about? Ahaha! <laughs> game developers, I see what you're doing. Are you telling me to save my game? I'll save my game. Okay. No. Okay, let's load the game. Okay, that's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, Yuri. We'll, we'll get through Yuri and Atsuki and then we'll go for the mother load. I see what you've written for today. Hmm. Well done, Kawaii-chan. Your skills are already improving. Really? Yeah, thanks, Yuri. That coming from you, that means a lot. Yeah, because she really, like, she really goes into it. Uh, it's, it's nothing. 
I'm just happy to help inspire fellow writers. I know you're new to this, don't worry so much if it seems like you can't get your poem to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid to do a little thing, blah blah. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings and write down the things you see and hear. Oh wow. That w that's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. That's certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that if you'd like to read it. Of course! Is this the poem you write for today? You're in Oz and Timberley hands me a poem. Okay. Oh, crap! This is a novel again. The croon it happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttling of a raccoon inside my, outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendency as an unordinary human. Ordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that's fed, that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, something, an urge. The moon incitement is a face that reflects much of light on my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the bow, wow, it becomes excited or perhaps... Oh wow, I'm gonna go past that. I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical and very long. Christ! Do we have time for this? No. I don't know if uh, it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. Oh, I can't... Um, I just, I just want to smash Sayori. I, I want to smash Sayori. Can we just... Using the poem... Uh, well... I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. If those sorts of things, then you should come them in there. So them that in the management there. Why do I keep the chef? Because uh, it's embarrassing, and people want to make fun of me. And blah blah blah, blah blah blah, blah blah blah, blah blah blah, shubi dubi, dubi dubi du, namana ma, hala blah blah, blah blah blah, hawrai. I saw the last time was. I'm glad you're a good listener. And literally all of that I just skipped. Okay, Natsuki. Okay, Christ. Mm. Well, it's not terrible, but it's pretty disappointing after your last one. Then again, if this one was as good as your last one, I would be completely pissed. Oh, uh, I guess you didn't like the words I chose this time. I guess I want to try something a little bit different this time. Fair enough, you're still new to this, so I wouldn't expect you to find your style right away. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. We're getting it. You think so? Well, I guess it's if you're friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. Or oh, we are micro waving into like this. But you never really struck me as a type. So he has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know. But honestly, how can someone so uh, fluffy spend some time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging you around at dead weight. Oh, that's a little mean. <laughs> oh, Christ. But think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away, like letting go of a balloon. You could say we each take care of each other in our own way. See, opposites attract. We're choosing a writer, lads. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here, let's see. Why are they so long this time? I don't know, oh, I don't wanna. It's so much reading. Amy likes, Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Okay, this is just about spiders and her not liking the person. Um, it's quite a bit. Yes, it's a way longer. Yesterday was too short. I was just warming up. Can can they be shorter, please? Can they be like one line poems? <laughs> I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can't explain, you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Jerk, is this about Yuri? I think this poem is about Yuri. I'm not gonna lie, I, th I think they're, they're beefing each other. Do you know people like that? Of course, but everyone thinks my, that doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Sometimes something that you're afraid if people find out, they make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. 
Who cares what someone likes, as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy? True. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. I agree with that. Huh, that's funny. You are wrote about something similar today, too. Huh, did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said a poem was about an unusual hobby of hers. I didn't really get it, but she said something similar to you. That people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well, I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt that she has some weird hobbies. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, it's not like I would judge her or anything. And Natsuki has trouble finding her words. I guess I should try to not be so mean to her. Yeah, I think you guys could be friends. You like have very different opinions, but I think you could agree on things. If she feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff, I mean, I, I always hate people who make me feel insecure. So, and you made me feel insecure yesterday, but the way you put it, it sounds like she learned a lesson. And well, I would say so. Even if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. Yeah, I think so too. I think uh, they just need to understand which other's perspective is coming from and they might actually be friends after that. It's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless they're a good message to take away from it. Like, uh, okay. There we are. Um, oh yeah. I'm ready. Um, oh my goodness. This is so good, Kawaii-chan. Eh? I love it. Especially after yesterday's poem. Um, you're too honest sometimes, Sayori. No, but really, I want to put this on my wall. Yeah, you can. Can I? Sayori, you must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good fighter at all. Honestly, I have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. <laughs> Jeez. I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little bit more constructive than this. Maybe even Atsuki's. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Um... Well, I'm sure that's part of it, but I think I understand you better than a lot of people, you know? So when I read your poem, it's just, it's not just a poem, it's its a Kawaii-chan poem! You're damn right it is. TM. Copyrighted. And that makes it feel extra special. Like I can feel your feelings in it. So you hugs the sheet against her chest. You're so weird, Sayori. <laughs> well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad, but that's why I just go by heart. And if it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> I really like her. I think, uh, I really like, because I'm the same. Like, I don't really know exactly what I like either. I like a bunch of different things. And I discovered that I liked someone thing new that I didn't like before. And then I don't like any, it's good. That way you like never, grow tired of things, because you always have something new to like. It's good. Why don't you at least try to give it some thought? Oh, you you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right, all right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Um, oh, I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Um, sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's, what's the word I'm looking for? It's uh, bittersweet. Yeah, I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most, but sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head and sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug and make nice happy rainbow. Sorry, that's unexpectedly poetic. Uh, it is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Kawaii-chan. I like that analogy. I like that. That is cute. I like it. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Let's see. They're all so long! Why are you all so long? Can you not stop writing? Like, it's not that hard. Just pen up. That's done. You're done. Okay. Bottles. I pop off my scarf like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe, and I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in a bottle, all in a row. My collection makes me a lot of friends. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. 
Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and dicking, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through the, my fr locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them off the shelf one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something, but all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. I think this might be about the fight yesterday. I think so. Holy crap. Sir, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot and I've been really in touch with my feelings like recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. This the point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Oh, thanks. I feel like I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten, you've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah, writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Oh, don't get ahead of yourself. So you always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. Me. I wonder if this is one of those times. But see, seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. And also the conversation she had with um, Monica earlier about the club and the future. I think she's really in for this. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today. So if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Uh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with the last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We don't need much more than a few decorations. So Yuri has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets uh, we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't really tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Oh, sorry. I thought you heard about it already. Um, we're going to be performing. Performing? Per um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let everyone, anyone else come up and recite poems too. So it's like a poetry uh, slam, like a poetry thing. So you're always putting it on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you think it's a really bad uh, an idea? Well, no, it's not a bad idea, but I didn't sign up for this, you know? There's no way I'm going to be forming in front of a group of people like that. I agree with Nasuki, see they're agreeing already, they're becoming best friends. Best friends. I ship them. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes at her head in fear. Guys? No, so Yuri, I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Nasuki and Yuri have never shared the poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite the poems out loud to a whole room full of people. That's true. Poems can be very emotional and very personal, so sharing them with a lot of people could be very scary. I guess I kind of overlooked that, so I'm sorry. But I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show anyone that everyone that literature is all about. Yeah, it's all about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons and having fun. That's right. And if those reasons that we're all in this club today, don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place. Uh, I mean, I came here because of cupcakes. I don't know about anyone else, but I'm here because of cupcakes. So, yeah, there's that. 
I know you do. I know we all do. And if it all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Atsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori so looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Atsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Um, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. All right, phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glanced around everyone else's as expectant faces. Sigh. I guess, I guess I don't really have a choice, do I? Uh, ah, that's awesome. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No, no, no way. Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poems in front of the club, how do you expect it to do it in front of strangers? Oh, no. Don't worry. I'll start off to everyone, help everyone feel a little bit more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now, let's see. Monica flips through a notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the poem. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting a poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finished the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That that was so good, so you, Monica. Uh, thank you very much. I, w I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, uh, Sayori? Uh, I'll go next. Um, Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances of each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called... After image of a crimson eye. Her voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in the structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she's bewildered like everyone else. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterwards and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we don't want, didn't want to applaud her either. That we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Um, okay, guess I'm next then. So Yuri hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks over to the podium. This one is called My Meadow. Ah, aha. Sorry, I giggled. Heh, <laughs> Sayori. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Um, trying to think that uh, of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror in your own head. If it's, it's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. It isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's so serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it, but hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori! Heh, <laughs> even Kawaii Shine liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? I mean, she likes you, man. She's gonna crush. It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Um, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where the sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little bit more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. Well, that, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone, you know. 
then next time I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little bit more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. Don't make me go before Kawaii-chan. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Kawaii-chan lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Bitch! Bitch! It's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it has to, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time though. But it's only a couple of days until the festival, isn't it? Yeah, maybe. All right then, that just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of his seat and makes her way to the podium. This poem is called, it's called, why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. <clears throat> Anyway, this poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Ah well. Did you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people would be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people, but when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. I get what that, I get what she means. Like, uh, it's like when when I do acting, when I do it in front of strangers, it's a lot easier than if only my friends are there. And uh, so I don't know why. It's because they know you, I think, and you almost feel like you're faking something. That's surprising, Natsuki. Oh wow, no. Return. Okay. That's the price, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Uh, well, it's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have too much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what's it, what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? Uh, uh, I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Oh, her skirt just went like floof. She's like Marilyn Mar Mar Monroe all of a sudden. Ah, uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait! I can do this, I can do this. Oh god, I can do this, please let me. Oh god. Alright! I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. It's for the sake of the club. And impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep! Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? It is. <laughs> Jeez, guys, don't make such a be big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Kawaii-chan, you don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was pacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I, l I like how we get to, um, I mean, uh, so Yuri fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day Yuri asked to walk home with you, and, um, huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. Um, I would still walk home with Sayori, hands down, easily. Sayori, you really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Eh? But, she's so beautiful and smart. Jeez. I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. Oh, you're so silly, Kawaii-chan. You're so silly. You're so silly. You think about me too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve... Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it, so... So Yuri, I've already made up my mind. 
I really can't figure you out sometimes. So sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? Hmm. The conversation trails off. It's kind of weird, a weird thing for Sayori to care so much about. But I want to respect her and keep her happy too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? Next time on blah blah blah. Now we're gonna write the poem first. Climax. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. Ahaha, ha. you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano? Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all, you're all willing to help out for the festival too. I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Huh? Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah, I'm not talking about our part of the festival, but it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound like a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do you usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. I like it. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You of all people? I didn't... I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because! It's right in your name! Monika. Eh? That's not how you say my name at all. Oh, so that makes no sense in translation. Huh? Never mind. Okay, so I'm guessing Ika or Mon means squid in Japanese or whatever, wherever this game is from. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? Eh, <laughs> fine, fine. Your actions aren't as funny as yours as yours anyway. Excuse me? Where's Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. So you're sitting at the desk in the center of the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Eh, <laughs> okay, but save. Yes. Okay, because, oh wow, because this is where we're gonna end this for this episode. It's been a mega episode, like, kudos to everyone who makes it through this. And honestly, you are doing so great. And I hope you're enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. It's getting more interesting. I'm actually uh, a little bit more, like, invested in the plot now. Like, I want this ship to happen. I ship them so much. Uh, I want it to happen. And I realize that this isn't a game for everyone, really. It's more... Uh, for someone who has a special interest in this kind of anime love storytelling kind of thing but I was reading a lot of reviews and it says it has horror and self-harm and like terror and like those kind of themes as well and I don't know where they are yet but maybe we'll see that in the next episode so uh, until then remember to have your vitamins stay strong and healthy and don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you again very soon